Welcome to another Reaper blog video. In this video, we'll take a look at what's new in Reaper 522. It's out today and it has a lot of nice little features as well as some really cool things like the new uh, latch preview automation mode. I'm a big fan of that new feature and I can't wait to show you. So as I said, it's available for download now at reaper.fm. Some highlights from the change log. There's a new automation mode called Latch Preview. You can find that in the Track uh, Automation menu here, or by right-clicking the Trim button here, and also in the Global Automation Override in the main transport right here. And there's a little description here, allow temporary override of armed envelopes, but do not write changes. When you're in this mode, and you touch a control on a plugin or on the track, it will add its envelope lane to the visible lanes. It will arm it for recording, but it won't actually write anything. This is a great mode if you have automation for one section of the song and you want to change something on a plugin or on the track controls later on in the song. This works really well for that. Unlike regular latch mode, so this will add in points wherever you move the cursor, right? And if you're if there's already automation after it, it's going to put in lines like this because it's just adjusting the um, previous point. And if we're in playback mode and we make a change and let go, it's going to continue until you press stop. Latch preview mode requires you to run an action to actually write the automation. Um, I'm in latch preview mode. I can click around and the fader, you can see here, the fader moves around as if it was playing back. I can press play and it's reading the automation. I can see my control surface moving. But if I touch the controller while it's playing back, you can see the fader is not moving, but it turned red. If I press stop, it's not going to rewrite any automation or anything until I use an action to commit that. What I like to do is make a time selection and then use the action write current values for actively writing envelopes to time selection. I have that assigned to the letter L, so that writes that. So I can press play, I can move this fader up to like plus three, press L, oops, cleared my time selection, press L and it's jumped it up to there. But this also works with plugins. So I'm going to bring up re-EQ. I am moving the plugin parameters without changing the automation lane. It added it automatically. But as I'm moving this, it doesn't snap like read mode would. And it's not writing like latch mode would. So touching a parameter adds it to the lanes, but it doesn't write it automatically. But what's cool is that I can move this during playback and then press L to write it within time selection. There are these other automation actions here that can be used in latch preview or any other mode. I find that this one tends to work best because I like to work in time selections, doing my mixing in sections at a time. So let's say we don't want to change the volume or the gain or frequency, we just unarm the track and run that. And only the ones that were armed, these two, were changed to the current value. These actions are best when they're assigned to a keystroke or, a, or some sort of controller so that you can do this without opening up the action list. Another new thing for automation is this new action transition time. So this is the old one for in touch and latch mode. When there's already automation written, you move a controller during playback uh, while, while it's recording automation. It would have this amount of time to return to the previous value. We now have that for running actions as well. So we can set this to 100 milliseconds. That's what we're seeing here. We can set this to 1,000 if we want. So once again, I'll just take my um, volume automation, move it down, press L. And there's a thousand milliseconds between um, the previous value and the new value. So you can totally customize 
what sounds right to you, a half second transition, an almost instantaneous transition, whatever you need. So with this change in the automation, there is also some requirements for theme makers. You can see here it says preview for this button here. Also in the um, global setting, there is a new graphic. If you make a theme, you need to update it because there are new buttons for the preview, uh, for the latch preview. If your theme does not have the correct icons for latch preview, it actually flips the image for the latch mode. So you can see that this is upside down and this one's upside down as well. So kind of a weird solution to it, but it kind of works. Ideal situation is your theme has the correct images. Moving on to effects, there's now a per plugin option to avoid loading undo states when possible, as well as improve behavior when doing high level operations such as adding tracks while UI for large VST plugins are open, such as contact, and also defaults to undo redo states for contact and east west plugins. So all these things are kind of related. On a big plugin, you might want to uh, click this plus button, go down to compatibility settings, and there is this new avoid loading undo states when possible option. There are a couple of new things in the notation editor I'd like to show you. Music XML export. So if we click in the menu, file, and notation export as music XML, and for now, we can only export, but importing notation information from other programs is coming. Another new thing, if we look in the view, notation view options, and display quantization, there is a new slider for uh, the quantize size, as well as a option to have this setting apply to the current track or the entire project. What display quantization actually does is change the appearance of notes in the notation editor without actually changing the MIDI underneath. For video support, we have this option for the Equa Rectangular 360 Panner. This is made for 360 videos. I unfortunately don't have any 360 videos here to show you, but um, if you are working in that line of work, there is now this panner for that. The last thing is that the video processor, when used on the monitoring effects chain, is not going to affect your renders. So you don't have to worry about bypassing anything there before rendering. So that's it for this video. There are more changes you can read in the change log. Lots of little bug fixes and changes. These are the most interesting changes. That new latch preview mode is excellent, especially when used as part of a cycle action. I'm going to have another video showing that. I'm actually putting that into use in a project. Uh, I think you'll really like that. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the website with a monthly donation through Patreon. And please visit reaperblog.net for a lot more.